Good morning. Good morning and welcome. We're glad that you're uh, listening in on our live stream uh, broadcast from Trinity at the Eastern Gate, Trinity Church at the Eastern Gate, and very glad to have you this morning. Let me share with you a couple scriptures for our call to worship. Psalm 24, 7. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And then another scripture, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. When Joseph revealed himself to his brothers uh, after having gone through such an ordeal where they sold him into slavery and all kinds of disappointments and struggles and challenges that Joseph faced. But listen, listen to these words of faith this morning. Joseph said, But as for you, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is in this day to save many people alive. Listen, that's what our faith does, isn't it? Our faith encourages us to see beyond the circumstances and to see what God is doing and how that God is good in all that he does. We have another scripture, Romans 8, 28. All things, not some things, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah this morning. Once again, just want to thank everyone for your faithful giving. I, sometimes uh, we've received it where people drop off their offerings at the church uh, when it's open. Uh, some of you have mailed it in. Some of you have, have uh, started giving uh, electronically through your bank or PayPal or different ways. But just want to say thank you for your faithful giving and uh, for your mission support too. Our missionaries all over the world are serving the Lord. And so uh, uh, we, we can be a part of what God is doing locally and around the world through our, through our giving and through our prayers. Hallelujah. One more thing about uh, in the way of an announcement, just to say that uh, we're watching carefully what the governor and what the president is saying as far as opening things up uh, and uh, uh, changing things. And uh, the government is, is talking about doing this in phases. And you know what? Maybe we will too. We're not really sure. We can't, we don't have a date. We don't know when things are going to happen, but trust me, we are thinking about it and we are think we are preparing and we are planning. Uh, and so we, uh, just want to let you know that, uh, we'll, we'll make sure we communicate and get the word out when that time comes. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Matt, and he's going to lead us in a time of worship together. Shall we pray? Lord, I thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, that anything and everything that the, that the devil means for evil, Lord, you turn it around for good. And we trust you, Lord, right now in the midst of this pandemic, right in the midst of all these changes. We trust you, Lord, that you are good all the time. You are good. You are faithful, oh Lord. And we love you and we praise you and we worship you this morning. You are the Lord. There is no other. We trust you, Lord, with our lives, with our families, with our livelihood, with our health. We trust you, Lord, with our church, with our community, with our nation. We trust you, Lord, that you are at work and we pray and call upon you this morning. Come and invade wherever we are this morning, whether we're at home or whether we're uh, uh, in the car or uh, wherever we are watching this service. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would just come and, and be especially close. We give you glory and give you praise. Let Jesus, let Jesus be exalted in all that is said and done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Wherever you are this morning, if you're at home watching, if you're listening, 
I encourage you to stand your feet as we worship our great God and King. The Bible says in Titus 2.11 that the grace of our God has appeared, bringing salvation for all mankind. And when we think about the grace of God and all that he's done over the years, and even now in this, in this crazy quarantine, we trust that his grace is abundant, even now. So would you remember his grace in the past and have confidence in his grace now and in the future? And let's sing. Where would I be? And where would I be without home? Chains are broken, chains are broken. I am saved by grace, and I mercy found me. I am saved by grace, and I have life, and it's only by your grace. Let's sing that again. Where would I be, and where would I? by grace and I bounding mercy found me I am saved by grace and I have life and it's only by your grace mercy mercy New every morning, oh, amazing, amazing, cause your grace, your grace saved me, oh, mercy, mercy, new every morning, amazing, amazing, cause your grace, your grace saved me, is your grace, your grace saved me. Thank you. So let's bless his name, church. Let's lift him up. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh. My soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, and all my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your praise again Whatever may 
departs and whatever lies before me oh let me be singing when the evening comes bless the lord oh my soul and oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before and oh my soul I'll worship your holy name God you're rich in love you're rich in love and you're slow to anger Your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing oh 10,000 reasons for my heart to find bless the lord oh my soul And worship His holy name Sing like never before And oh my soul I'll worship Your holy name and On that day when our strength fails And on that day when my strength is failing The end draws near and my time has come And still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Come on, church, let's sing, sing like never before. And oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. I'll Worship your holy name. Father, we rejoice in you this morning. As Peter said in his first book, that though we don't see you with our eyes, God, we love you. Because our heart sees you. We see you with the eyes of our soul. God, and we rejoice in you. We rejoice in who you are and what you've done for us in the cross of Christ. We rejoice that we're your sons and your daughters. So when we think about you, Lord God, we rejoice now as we wait for then, that beautiful day when you will bring your church into your presence. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked 
me up, how he turned me round, how he placed my feet on solid ground. Sing that again. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, how he turned me around, how he placed my feet. On solid ground, it makes me wanna shout, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It makes me wanna shout, Hallelujah! Oh, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. All the honor, all the praise. Yes, God, we rejoice. There's nothing too difficult for you. Nothing impossible for our God. You believe that? Let's sing that again. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, how he turned me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground. Oh, it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, oh, thank you Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory. God, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. God, we know that when we see you face to face, we will see, we will look into the face of our Redeemer. We will sing these words. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy to receive honor and glory and power and praise and riches and might forever and ever. And God, I thank you that even now we we have a foretaste of that great day as we sing makes me want to shout hallelujah and thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to shout hallelujah oh thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory Yes, you're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. It makes me want to shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, and Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and praise to be unto you, O God. 
You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of our worship this morning. We worship you. We praise your holy name. You are an awesome God. Awesome God in all that you do. You are good. You are faithful, oh God. You are a mighty God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. You've called us. You've called us by name. We belong to you, Lord. We belong to you. We bear your name, oh God. We thank you that you lead us and guide us. You protect us. You provide for us. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Wherever we are right now, we praise you, Lord. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, right now, I just want to pray a, a blessing over our congregation and all who are listening. I pray blessing. I pray blessing of protection. I pray blessing of healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have people in our congregation, our loved ones that are, that are in the hospital or have had surgeries or are, are sick or or suffering alone, Lord. We pray that you'd be especially close to them right now. We, we ask, Lord, just as you did, Lord Jesus, extend your hand right now upon them and lay a hand upon them and heal them. Put your hand upon their brow and, and heal them, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray that muscles will, will relax. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that, that, that eyes will be opened. I pray in Jesus' name that, that hearing will be released right now. In Jesus' name, I pray that viruses will, will disappear, that will be, will be cast out in Jesus' name. We take authority, the authority that we have in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you're doing exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what we can even ask for or think, oh God. You are at work, oh God. We praise your holy name. We praise your holy and wonderful name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you picked us up and you turned us around. Thank you, Lord, that you heal us. You are our healer. You're our deliverer. And right now, you're doing that very thing. You are doing that very thing, oh God, right now. Lord, bless you. Those who are listening, those who are watching. Keep you. Oh God, you're doing it right now. In Jesus' name. I pray a covering, a protection oh, over our congregation. A protection over every household in Jesus' favor, name. Over all of our people, from the youngest the to the oldest right now. We pray that covering of protection. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So that the plague will pass over. Protect us, oh God. All around you. Protect us, He's oh with you. Yes. He is with you, Hallelujah. he is with you yes. in the morning, yes. in the evening, yes. in your coming, Hallelujah. in yes. your going, yes. in your weeping, yes. in rejoicing. Hallelujah. He is with you, oh, yes. he is with you, Hallelujah. he is for you, he is for you, he is for yes. you, he is yes. for you, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you. We sing Amen. 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 We sing Amen. 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 His face. Be upon you yes. in a thousand <laughs> generations, Hallelujah. in your family, yes. in yes. your children, in the children, in the children, who be found before yes. you, yes. and behind you, yes. and beside yes. you, all around yes. you. He is with you, oh, he is yes. with oh, you, yes. he is with you in the morning. In the evening, yes. in your coming, in your going, yes. 
in your weeping and rejoicing. Yeah. He's for you. He's for you. He's for you. Thank you. He's for you. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want to share a word with you now this morning. We're going to sing that song again, by the way, at the end of this service. Is that all right? Can we do that again? That's the prayer of blessing. The blessing. And... Uh, and what a great way that will conclude this service. Yeah. This morning, I want to read a scripture from Luke chapter 24. Luke's gospel chapter 24. And this is one of the post-resurrection uh, scriptures. And you've heard it before on the road to Emmaus. Beginning in verse 13. Now, that same day, two of them, meaning disciples or followers of Jesus... Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Oh, listen. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. I don't know. I have a sense that Jesus showed up in our, in, as we were worshiping this morning as well. Verse 16, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. That makes me smile every time I read that because Jesus, he was baiting them. He was drawing them. What things? He knew what they were talking about. What things? About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Jesus said to them, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going... Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and, it, and, and began to give it to them. Then, Their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem 
And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Will you pray with me? Lord, again, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Now may your spirit and your word shape us and do a deep work in our hearts and lives. Find fertile ground in us, O God, that it might produce a harvest that will glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are Easter people. We are Easter people. That's why I've named this sermon this morning I've titled it Easter People. We are Easter people if you have believed and received and committed your entire heart and life to following Jesus. You are people of the resurrection. You are the Easter people. I shared last Sunday on Easter Sunday, by the way, that uh, a friend, retired pastor uh, of our, in, our, in our area, Dave Diani, uh, been a friend for many, many years, he put on Facebook, uh, he posted uh, the origin of the word Easter. And I'm like many of us, or many of you maybe, that uh, I had been told and taught that Easter, uh, the name itself, uh, was pagan in origin. That it came from the name of a pagan goddess by the name of Ishtar, uh, Babylonian, and uh, goddess of fertility, and and on and on. And and I'm not saying that there hasn't been uh, some of the Babylonian religious uh, infiltration sometimes in in our religious practices, but Dave pointed out, and I appreciated it. He said actually the word Easter. It's found in the Bible. And that got my attention. He said, it's found in the Bible in Acts chapter 12, verse 4. And in that passage of Scripture, uh, it's talking about, in chapter 12 of the book of Acts, it's talking about they were celebrating Passover, okay? But by this time, the church was predominantly Gentile now, or there was a lot of Gentiles in the church, and so they wouldn't have been they wouldn't have been celebrating Passover. In the old King James, it actually uses the word Easter. Replacing Passover, it actually uses the word Easter. And then he went on to say that Easter uh, comes from a Germanic, uh, and the uh, Germanic word, uh, Oster, which meant the dawning of a new day. The dawning of a new day. And so uh, the King James, which was written in early 1500s, uh, King James translators chose to use that word from the German language, Oster, Easter, to mean the dawning of a new day. Well, what does it mean? to be Easter people then? What does it mean to be the people who are uh, uh, living in this dawning of a new day that's taking place? What what does it mean to be the Easter people uh, living in a difficult time like a pandemic or a COVID-19 virus spreading or a quarantine? What does it mean to be the Easter people in a time of a lockdown? Or... What does it mean to be the Easter people in the dawning of a new day when we come out of this time, when there's big change taking place, when there's a new normal, I'm sure, a new normal. It's the dawning of a new... You see, as Easter people, we're, we're following a risen, resurrected Jesus who is always in a new day. It's always a new day in Jesus. So, folks, we can't go back to the normal. The normal is past. It's gone. It's in, in, in the resurrection. It's always the new day. It's always the dawn. It's not the setting sun. It's a new day. It's the dawning of a new day. Our scripture this morning is about 
how this dawning of the new day, this resurrected Jesus, brought an end to the night of a couple travelers. He, he interrupted their journey. He, he broke up their conversation and their, their, uh, their train of thought, I'm sure. He changed their direction and he set them on a new journey in the right direction. That's what this story is about. It was, it was Sunday afternoon. It was Sunday afternoon of the day of resurrection, of this brand new day, of this dawning of the new day. It was Sunday afternoon. Two of the followers of Jesus, we know one of them's name was Cleopas. Uh, We don't know the other one's name except by tradition, I suppose, but not in scripture. But they were, they were followers of Jesus and they were, they were uh, heading home. Uh, one of them, at least one of them lived in Emmaus, which was about seven miles outside of Jerusalem. And as they were leaving Jerusalem, it was in the afternoon, they'd heard some crazy reports about Jesus' body being missing and, and somebody saw the ghost or, you know, they, they had all kinds of things that they were discussing as they were walking away from Jerusalem. Oh, they were on the right road, but they were going the wrong way. And, and then what were they discussing? Well, I can tell you what they were discussing. They were, their, their, their discussion was something like this. It's over. Everything's, everything's gone south on this thing. It's very sad. Uh, there, there is no more normal. Any, hopes are shattered. Maybe their discussion is, what are we going to do now? How, how, how could this have happened? That was probably the big thing right there. They, they had seen too much. They had heard too much. They had fallen in love with the Savior. They had seen it all. How could this possibly happen? When Jesus himself joined them on the road. (laughs) I love that. He joined them and he came to walk along with them and he entered into their conversation. He said, what are you guys talking about? He came alongside of them and he comes alongside of us. Listen to me. During this pandemic, you're not alone. During this lockdown, you're not alone. During this uncertainty, you're not alone. Jesus has come alongside of us. And not only that, but he is the victor. He's the resurrected one. He's the overcomer. There isn't anything you and I are facing right now that is greater than the resurrected Jesus. And he's come alongside of us. And he's our shepherd. We're his sheep. And he's gathering up some lost sheep right at this moment. But it says that they were kept from recognizing him. What? Why didn't they recognize him? They were followers of Jesus. They had, they'd been with him for a period of time. We're not sure exactly how long. But, but they had been followers of Jesus. Why didn't they recognize him? The way, it was, the, way the passage, the scriptures worded, uh, it has, it's not real clear uh, except Uh, my interpretation of it. It, 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 Sometimes people have gotten the idea that God kept them from recognizing Jesus. I'm not so sure. I think I think their own hearts kept them from recognizing him. In fact, Jesus even rebukes them a little bit later and says, oh you of slow of heart. Slow of heart. You're not, you're not, your eyes are not open. You see, that's what kept them from recognizing him. And that's what keeps us from recognizing Jesus in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of this coronavirus, in the middle of, of war and economic upheaval, in the midst of divorce, in the midst of, of uh, tragedies that happen, in the midst of loss and grief. Sometimes it's our own hearts that keep us from recognizing that he's right there all the time. He's there. 
but our own hearts, our own unbelief, too often times keep us from recognizing. You see, that's the problem. It's not an it's not an eyesight issue uh, per se. It's 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 a heart issue. It's it's an unbelief problem. Verse 17, Jesus, I love this, Jesus wanted to help them. (laughs) He wanted to help them. He wanted to help them to have faith. He wanted to help them to have, to open up their hearts. It says that their faces were downcast. Yeah, they they were disappointed. And maybe maybe right now there's a lot of people, a lot of believers actually, that and and a lot of people that are that are downcast and disappointed and have lost hope and and uh, there's confusion maybe and unbelief. Maybe maybe there are some who think that this is the end, that that it's over, uh, and that uh, my business is over, my dreams are shattered, on and on. Their faces were downcast. But listen. Listen. Jesus has come alongside of us. And he wants to help open up our eyes by faith. He wants to help us open up our eyes so that we recognize him. Listen, I've been thinking a lot about that, this word, as I've been preparing for this morning. Uh, you know, with us changing, we have to change the way we do church. You know, we don't, have, uh, we don't have very many people. We don't have hardly any people here this morning. Although I appreciate those of you who are here. I don't want you to be slighted by that. I'm just saying that we're, we're in a new day, folks. We've got to think differently. We've got to see things differently. And, and one of the things, even though our doors are locked, even though our church is shut down for the most part uh, in, in being operating as normal, you need to understand some things. And things that have surprised me. Listen, we've got over 500, 528 people following our Facebook page uh, and on our services. Uh, last night, Bishop had the Saturday Joy Live service. And, he, and last time I looked, Bishop, you had over 265 people that were viewing that service last night. And this last week, uh, on my daily Facebook post that I've been doing, uh, I did, uh, uh, on Tuesday, uh, some of you were shocked to see that I'd shaved my beard and mustache off. Do you know we had almost 800 people watching that day <laughs> just to see if I really did it? I don't know, but it, it spiked. Usually we have about two to three hundred, two to three hundred people watching every day the devotional that I do. But on Tuesday, <laughs> without a, you know, without a beard and mustache, we shot up to almost 800 people. <laughs> Cracks me up too. Yeah, is there a message there? Yeah, you're right. There's a message there. Listen, we're reaching more people than we have in this from this church than we have in over probably close to 15 years. Do you suppose? Do you suppose that maybe? Maybe the stage is being set for a revival and for a harvest time like we've never seen before in this church or even in this world. Uh, Right now, God is doing something. Oh my goodness, open up your eyes and see he's come alongside of us. What the devil has meant for evil, God is using for good. Listen, I don't know if I want to go back to normal. (laughs) As if we could. God is up to something. This is the dawning of a new day. Those two followers of Jesus, they were on the right road, but they were going in the wrong direction. And so let me ask you a question this morning. Which way are you headed this morning? What what way are you heading in your life? You see, 
those two followers, they were downcast in their, in their, their faces were downcast. Well, that's a natural reaction. What we need is a supernatural response. And you get a supernatural response when your eyes are open and you see what the Lord is doing. I do believe that the Lord is bringing about revival and an awakening. In the midst of a shaking, he's bringing about an awakening. But first he needs to, he needs to tear down some of the stronghold, some of the unbelief that's bl- bringing about spiritual blindness. He needs to change the way that we're thinking about things. We've got to begin to think in terms of the resurrection. We've got to need, think in terms of a dawning of a new day. I pray that we have a fresh encounter with Jesus, even this morning, that will turn things around. Verse 18, it says that they were shocked by this stranger. I couldn't believe that, are you the only one? Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem that didn't know what was going on, what had happened? And Jesus again said, what things? Jesus was drawing them out. He knew what things, but he was drawing them out. And listen, that, that's what I hope is happening right now. I, God wants to draw us out of our strongholds, out of our stinking thinking, out of our depression or disappointments or, or uh, uh, our giving up. He wants us to be drawn out You see, he already knows. He already knows what's going on. And he knows our hearts. But too often times, we don't know our own hearts. You see, those two followers of Jesus, they had heard the reports. They had a head knowledge, but they didn't have a heart knowledge. They didn't see what God was doing. So Jesus explained the scriptures, the word to them. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, according to Romans 10, 17. You see the word of God, that's why it's so important that you get into the word every day and, and, and read the scriptures and, and memorize scriptures because as you do that, your faith will grow stronger and stronger. So at one time the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. Well, this is the way to increase our faith. The more that we get into the word and the word gets into us, the more stronger our faith will become and increase in our lives. Well, they arrived, the three of them, arrived in Emmaus. Jesus appeared to be going on, to be going further. But they urged him to come in and stay over with them. They sat down to the table to eat. And as they did, Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to them. Oh, that looked awful familiar. That looked awful reminiscent of something. Oh my goodness, something, something stirred deep inside of them. More than just a memory, I believe it was a spirit stirring within them. And in that moment, their eyes, their spiritual eyes were open. They didn't need their physical eyes anymore, but their spiritual eyes were open. And so their physical eyes were not necessary and he disappeared. He disappeared. You see, listen to me carefully. This is the word this morning. Your faith, our faith, is more precious to God than anything. It's our faith that he's after. It's, It's that faith, that knowing of God, that leads to actions that change and transform us. Our faith is what opens our eyes. Our faith is more precious to God than all your abilities, all your resources. More precious to God than anything that you do. Do you trust him? Do you know him? When Jesus disappeared, they 
immediately got up from the table. They immediately got out of the house and headed back to Jerusalem. They found the 11 and the other followers of Jesus all gathered together in verse 33. Uh, through 35, it was testimony time all of a sudden. It was testimony time. Oh, Simon saw him, and this is the report we heard, and, and oh my goodness, uh, it's true. It's all true. Jesus has risen from the dead. It was testimony time. Listen, testimony comes when you've been tested. Isn't that what they say? When there's been a test... That's where the testimony comes from. And they were, had been tested. And you and I are being tested. That's where the testimonies come from. This COVID-19, it's a test. This, this, this uh, pandemic is a test. The earthquakes, the, the tornadoes, the loss of jobs, the uh, sicknesses, uh, all these kind of things, they're, they're, they're all tests. They're all tests. What are they, what are they trying to uh, expose or reveal? They're trying to show us our faith. Yes. Yes, Lord. So what's your testimony this morning? Yes. Have you got a testimony? What's your testimony this morning? The word testimony, uh, the Greek word in the New Testament that's translated testimony is actually the word uh, marturion, which is where we get the English word martyr. Kind of gives you the idea that a testimony is a matter of life or death. It's, It's a matter of all or nothing. Testimony, when we give a testimony, we are saying that this is true and my life counts on it. And we proclaim the truths of the gospel. We're telling the good news. The good news. Listen, I've got some good news for you this morning. Here's the good news. This is my testimony. As Matt was singing this morning, uh, and he's going to sing it again. God is for you. God is for us. God loves you. God forgives you. God has a plan for your life. All of that is true. He has a purpose for your life. God is bigger than anything you and I are facing or ever will face. God is good, God is wise, God is gracious, God is faithful, and God is still on the throne. All of that is true, and that's the good news this morning. Therefore, put your trust in Him. Put your trust in Him. Verse 32, as I close this morning. Verse 32, they said to one another, we're not, we're not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road. We're not, we're not our hearts burning as, as Jesus was walking alongside of us, as he was unfolding the script, as we were listening to the word of God, as we were hearing the truths, the good news. We're not our hearts, our spirit burning within us as he opened the scriptures to us. Have you experienced that burning heart? That fire of the Holy Spirit. That spiritual evidence. That assurance. That blessed assurance. That Jesus is mine. Do do you know it's a new day folks? Do you know, friends, that it is the dawning of a new day? Have, have you surrendered your life, your journey to Jesus? Oh, he's come alongside of you right now, this morning. Right for wherever you're at, he's come alongside of you. He's able to do that. He's able to do what we cannot do for ourselves and what we cannot do for each other. He is able Listen, an encounter with Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, will turn your life around. It'll turn your life around. Believe 
and receive and open your eyes to see Jesus this morning. As I said before, we're going to close with Matt singing that uh, leading us in that song, The Blessing. I want to pray a blessing right now. We'll, we'll sing that and then I'll give the benediction following that. Lord, this morning, by faith, we take a hold of you, Lord. We open up our hearts to you. We put our trust in you, O oh God. We surrender to you, Lord, that we might be in your will. We might be on the right road, headed in the right direction. Lord, our faith is more precious to you than anything. So, Lord, search our hearts right now. We trust you. We believe in you. We follow you, Lord, into this new day, dawning of a new day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This is at the book of Numbers, a blessing pronounced over the nation of Israel. We who have faith in Christ are the new Israel the remnant of God God wants to bless you church to receive these words the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be great just to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace so we believe we affirm this is true we sing amen bless the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace we sing amen Beside you 
all around you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, in rejoicing. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Corinthians says that we are sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Church, this is how we rejoice. How many of you know that's true? This is how we rejoice. We look to Him and we remember that He is for us. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. The Lord rejoices in you. Let's sing this. May his favor be upon you. Oh God, we believe this is true. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children all around you for you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and we do sing he is for you 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 oh, amen and oh Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.